Hi friends. It's hard to believe that in the last two weeks alone, 65 Saskatchewan residents have lost the battle to COVID-19. In this fourth wave, it isn't just a battle against COVID that they lost, but also a battle against misinformation and a government that refuses to take responsibility to protect its people. I remember at the start of this pandemic, I texted a friend, maybe a silver lining of this pandemic scare will be a greater public trust in science. So when it comes time to deal with existential threats like climate change, we'll have learned that acting fast is the only viable solution. As we all know, we didn't act fast. The first wave caught us off guard, and to a lesser extent, the second did as well. We made mistakes because there was so much we didn't know, and so much the general public needed to learn. The third wave changed the rules. The virus evolved, but our methods to fight it didn't. Our policymakers underestimated this virus again and again. A generous interpretation would be that our leaders failed us because they didn't trust the knowledge of experts. A cynical interpretation might be that they allowed some of this to happen for political reasons. And yes, I'm calling you out Scott Moe and your friend Jason Kenney too. Divisive leaders politicized the science in this pandemic and in response, the scientists were forced to become political. Right now, we're in the dark days of what will absolutely be the worst wave of this pandemic. A wave that was predictable, preventable, and absolutely inexcusable. Every reputable expert warned against reopening too fast. When Saskatchewan dropped all public health measures, Delta had already burned through India to show us its severity, and then through the UK to show us that vaccination levels needed to be higher to prevent a resurgence. Every warning sign was ignored. Every plea from healthcare workers, scientists, and public health experts was mocked by the people elected to protect us and the talking heads that support them. Ryan Miley and our elected NDP MLAs spoke out publicly to the press and worked behind the scenes to implore our government to do more things. Things like restoring the public health order to ensure that po positive cases needed to isolate and put in vaccine mandates that have been proven to combat vaccine hesitancy. Our government had the opportunity and the knowledge to avoid this, but instead they took the summer off. We're nearing 20,000 cases diagnosed in this fourth wave. Over 6,000 of those cases are in kids who had no means to protect themselves. More than 120 people have died in this wave so far. Hundreds more have been hospitalized, and that includes young adults in their prime. Young or old, many will have a long road to recovery. The healthcare system is in tatters, held together by the sheer willpower of every single worker who gets up in the morning and says to themselves, I'm going to fight like hell to save some lives today. While knowing that the best that they can give won't be enough to save everyone, it's demoralizing. In the next month, we're going to hear devastating stories, stories of children orphaned because their parent wasn't vaccinated. People denied care because there aren't enough staff, equipment, or medications to handle the avalanche of preventable cases. Non-COVID patients left to suffer because our system didn't have the capacity left to help them. We can look back and say things like, if only we'd elected a doctor as our premier. Hundreds and hundreds of lives could have been saved from what is really a brutal way to die. I could go on for hours pointing out all the bad decisions Scott Moe's government has made, but to what end? There will be plenty of time to assign blame and demand accountability when this crisis isn't raging anymore. Right now, we need to work towards improving the present and securing a future. So what can we do today to help ensure a better future for tomorrow? We can put pressure on the government to release their models. That forces them to back up their decisions with evidence. That's the foundation of good policymaking. As a colleague from Alberta so wisely pointed out, either they've known how devastating this wave would be and ignored it, or they cherry-picked models to fit their reopening goals despite all other experts and their models showing the contrary. Either way, it's a dereliction of duty to protect and serve the people. We can also put pressure on our government to accept federal assistance especially in the form of relief workers to protect our doctors and nurses from burnout. Lastly, we can take individual actions to flatten the curve. This time it's different. This time we know that the majority of cases and deaths are in the unvaccinated. But what I want you to remember is that 
the 200,000 eligible unvaccinated Saskatchewan residents are not our enemies. Our enemies are the virus, disinformation, and fear. Many unvaccinated people are victims of circumstance, caught up in a web of lies and distrust, paralyzed that by making a decision to get vaccinated, they might choose to put themselves at risk. When you're in that position where doing something is scary, the alternative of doing nothing and just sort of waiting becomes an easy fallback. We have a vaccine mandate now. The pressure is finally coming from where it should have been all along, government policy. We won't convince people to become unvaccinated. We won't convince the unvaccinated people to vaccinate themselves with shame or mockery. Having spent a lot of time at this, I know that what unvaccinated people need is reassurance, encouragement, patience, and compassion. These are our friends, our family members, our co-workers, and our neighbors. We need to build bridges and tear down walls. Please reach out to any people in your sphere of influence who are unvaccinated and let them know that they're welcome and we can encourage them. At the end of this, division only makes our society weaker and unity is what really makes for a strong Saskatchewan. Thank you.